So we start. So um, <clears throat> what we were um, we were um, talking about. We're still talking about the vertex with the sentence. It's this it's caps vertex with the sentence. Mean they have some moduli space, quasi map moduli, corresponding to this. I'll just draw that like that. And this space has two evaluation maps, has evaluation map at, at zero. And this goes to the stack and has a valuation map at infinity, and that goes to X itself. And so this is how X, so this makes the stack and the X talk. And so then I've been asked a few times, and this is uh, uh, which way do we push forward? And of course, this is so in, if you if you want to compute some some integral in actual physical theory, you pull back from both sides and you push forward to the point. But by push-pull, you can either pull back from one side and push to the other, and so this is this all equivalent. So because if some class is, is pulled back, and so if some class is pulled back and you push it forward, then you get that class back. So this is, this is in other words, this is a correspondence between X and the stack. And so this is how X and the stack are talking to one and to each other. So that's, we will be, uh, we will be investigating this. So this is, uh, and so maybe, um, maybe I will say a few words about, about that stack. So then we can, you know, we understand what we're talking about. So this is, so this is for us X, so that's uh, that's a quotient stack. Stack. So this is we take uh, concretely we have uh, maybe maybe we have some so we have some Rx. So we have some x. So this is this is a, this is embedded. It's a quotient. So it's a quotient by some group, but so it sits in some, so for us it sits in some ambient space, some, you know, in fact, some kind of vector space. Modulo the group. And so in the end, the objects on the stack are what, on the quotient stack of this kind, what is it? These are the G equivalent objects on, on the pre-quotient, and so in the end, this will be just a, just a G. There's one more group G, so this is for for um, for Nakajima query varieties. This this is this G is a product of G L V I, and so this means the K theory, the K theory of this object. K theory, or maybe you know, whatever, whatever, whatever this, or or elliptic homology or K theory of, it's we had some group action before, so we'll keep that equivalent, and this would be of that. That is just whatever equivalence we had before, cross this G of of the point because it's only a vector space and it makes no difference. And so this is just representation ring of this group. So this is this is whatever whatever representation ring of we had before. So maybe k equivalent of the point before, and we adjoin the new variables, which are maybe x, you know, i, j, and this is so. These are the these are in the these are. These are in the maximal torus of this group. And the result has to be invariant under the Weyl group, which is the product. The Weyl group is a product of symmetric group. 
in each of size di. So there's a there's some groups of variables and they're symmetric in each group of variable. That's that's the result. This is what we're talking about K theory of the stack. It's something very simple. Right? So then maybe we will review we'll review some sort of we'll review notation. What is you know what is um <clears throat> what's the um you know, how am I supposed to think about it? So our X that is the quotient X is the quotient by G, so you mod out by G of some set of maybe some stable locus, or in this case a stable equals semi-stable. This is an open set, so this is this is our the semi-stable, this is the stable points. In some cost tank Y, which is which is the moment map zero thing. So this is this embedding is open. And then this is a, this is a closed subset in some in some ambient space. So ambient Z which is uh which is for us just a vector space. And so um and so how do we how do we uh what does it mean stable so stable so which are which points are stable stable means there is so there's there's a geometric i i i think it's better we talk a little bit about it because since uh since uh, uh, uh you know some it's good to have basic discussion at some point too. So there's just to get everybody should should get on the same page. So what does it mean stable? So stable. So this we'll talk about this now. So this is there. There are two definitions of stable. There is a algebraic definition, and there is a, and there is a, and there is kind of a geometric definition. And so this is this this means that um, that uh, so. This is so. This is same bit. So maybe you know need. You know, this for us. This is a vector space. But for the discussion. So for us, vector space. But for this discussion, it's, it need not be. Um, need not be. Uh, need not be this. And then this M bin has an ample line, ample G grade line bundle. So on this, we have. Um, an ample G current line bundle. And then you can say, well, that X, you can give definition X one line, X is the approach of, you take, um, you take sections Maybe take sections of all powers of this line bundle well like restrict them to y so this is take l n and I take g invariant so and so this means this means a point a point y is stable y and y is stable if there is so what's the what what was the approach approach means there has to be a non-zero section of this line bundle so if there exists f a section g invariant section of this line bundle such that f is non-vanishing at y so what does it mean that the what does it mean that um, that this happens? Well, we can assume we we can we may as well assume that Z in the so we can take we can take an embedding of Y and Z. So this what does it mean geometrically? So we can take Z we can take in Z some projective space of some vector space. So 
so that the O four, so that the L, we just use L as the ample line bundle is embedding. So this is this this is the pullback of O of one. So this we can start like that. And so this embedding is G command. We can always do this. And then what does it mean that uh, that there is a non there is a, so we're asking so stable means there is a polynomial of some degree there's a form of some degree that's not vanishing on my point y and so then this is so maybe maybe I'll draw it something something like that we have um so maybe this is um, this is my this is my this is my space v and well, the vector space is not how I draw a vector space. I usually draw a vector space. I draw some which has an origin, kind of a visible origin. So this is this is my V. Then then there's the projective space V, which I'll maybe I'll draw like that. So this is projective space of V. Inside here we embedded Y. So Y Y is embedded in the so maybe I'll draw Y. That has a chance. This is this is my Y and the group G. So group G act. The group G acts here. And uh <clears throat> And then X is kind of the quotient, so maybe maybe X is more or less the quotient. So this is like X, and this is Y. And so then, what is what are we talking about here? We're talking about that the X is the approach of you take the homogeneous coordinate ring. Of of the cone over Y, so this is this all sections of L that are just homogeneous. This a uh, this a uh, homogeneous um, homogeneous form on the cone over Y. So we'll you know that cone. So this is the cone over Y. Okay, and so then we take G invariance. So that's the picture. And so when is it the case that there is a point point is unstable means means there is no there's no polynomial homogeneous polynomial of positive degree which is non vanishing on on this point. What does it mean? So in general if I have a reductive group acting on an, on a, on a fine variety like y hat then the um then the the invariants separate so G invariants always separate closed points, closed orbits on one head. And so, what does it mean? It means why there if what if there is no non-zero polynomial it's invariant under G means the orbit of the point. So this is what does it mean to be unstable? To be unstable means. To be unstable means the G orbit, if I take the G orbit in the cone, that this orbit, so most orbits, so maybe, so there is a, okay, no, I don't want that. So most orbits, most G orbits, if I lift them, so most G orbits, if I take them in the cone, they still kind of, you know, so this is, this is an action of G. But an unstable point is the one such that so a point is unstable if its G orbit closure contains zero. So, so Y is unstable if take the closure of that and that contains zero. So zero is already closed orbit. So this is in general, when when our two orbits cannot be separated is when their closures intersect, but zero is already closed. So, so this means this. Okay. 
and then there is a Hilbert Mumford criterion for this. It's in Right, I'm, I'm giving you like a, a five minute crash course in, in invariant theory. And uh, of course, this, is, this, will not re, this will not replace a classical treatment. I particularly recommend Winberg Popov. Winberg Popov is a wonderful book to read. So uh, it's called Invariant Theory. And so this is, and also a book by Mukai. That's also a nice book. It's called Introduction to Invariance and Moduli. It's a very lovely book to read. Well, the many other lovely books, so I don't mean to suggest that other books are not, are not good. So what does Hilbert Mumford criterion say? When is an orbit, when is an orbit closure of an orbit contains zero? So this Hilbert Mumford criterion says that um, that uh, the closure of Y contains zero. This happens only if and only if if I act by the torus that contains zero for some for maximal torus. And this is also say that this is this equivalent that there is a one parameter subgroup. There exists C from C star to G one parameter subgroup such that C of T times Y goes to zero as T goes to zero. That's a nice thing. And uh, so this means, so you can you can say you can say it like this. I can fix the torus, you know, take from, takes one torus, see which point it brings to zero, and then take the g orbit of that. That will be the state of, set of unstable points. And uh, this you can explain geometrically, actually, kind of very nicely. So if I have a torus, how do I know? How do I know when the closure of an orbit contains zero? Well, this is if and only if I look at the Newton polygon. So I take the Newton polygon of, of the vector y with respect to the torus. Which is to say, so this is this is the convex hull of weights that appear in the expansion of Y. So maybe so is here that prepared a picture for that. So this is this is the this is Newton polygon is the convex hull of weights, T weights that appear in Y. So every vector can be decomposed into the eigenvectors and I record all the weights that uh, that appear in this expansion. So these are the weights. That appear, that appear in Y. In the span TY. And so then the condition, when is that, when is that thing by the action of the torus can be made zero? Can be made zero if the zero weight is outside of this convex hull. So this means this is simply a leaf. If and only if the zero weight, so maybe I'll put it here. This is the zero weight. Right? Because if it's outside, that means in particular this is a convex hull, in particular it can be separated by a hyperplane. And then if I scale everybody on one side of the hyperplane by, you know, I scale the weights on one side of the hyperplane, that stuff goes to zero and, and conversely. So that's a very easy to convince yourself. So this is this is a very simple criteria. From this perspective, there's a very simple criterion at which points are stable. So maybe, maybe as an example, so example which we understand pretty well is, T star Grassmannian. And then T star Grassmannian, that's what is it? That is, that is, we take the action of the, 
Well, let's discuss the stability. For stability, it doesn't matter on which space you discuss it, right? So this, if I take a bigger space, it's the same stability. It means it, it, it's a property of a point. So it, it depends. It doesn't mean in which ambient space would we consider. So this is this is uh, this is embedded in the quotient of just you take home so maybe Grassmannian Kn. Um, This is this is a positive. This is an academic variety. So K n, this is embedded into the quotient. You take the home from C n to C k plus the home from C k to C n, and then uh, so maybe call elements here is conventionally a and b, and we take the quotient stack of that by by G l k. And so when is the when is the point stable? Well, <clears throat> my my torus. Oh no, so sorry, I sorry, one, I missed one step. I apologize. So I missed one one step. Is that in practice? So sorry, we will we'll come back to that. We'll come back to that in a second. So, so. In practice, and this, e.g., for all Nakajima varieties, we use a slightly different setup. We use a setup when the ambient space is is affine. It's not sits in the projective space. I mean, of course, one is equivalent to the other. So if I have, have an affine variety, it's a Fine variety is a complement of a very ample divisor in projective space. So I mean, you know, we can reduce one to the other very easily. So you just, if you have a fine variety, you can put it in the vector space and you can compactify the projective space. So it's, you know, it's one, one and the same thing. But, but, so, uh, but the, the, the statement is really a little bit different. So then the ambient, so instead of, instead of L, so L, we usually take, for this, so since it's we already in a fine variety, so we assume that L is already we took out the parts and things. So we just might as well assume that this is this is just functions on Y or on Z. So, and then we twisted them by a character chi of G. So a slightly slightly different setup. And then if you chase what the discussion what the previous discussion about so so this uh, this polygons we draw the polygons resemble the variety so if I have a closure of a toric orbital okay so maybe yeah a closure of a torus orbit that is a toric variety this is a toric variety right and why it's, it's it, which is why we talk about the historic variety in terms of polygons because polygons you know, kind of resemble the a compact polygon resembles a, a projective historic variety so in fact projective historic variety right. and then uh, and then uh, in the affine situation we'd rather talk kind of a fine historic variety and they're more resemble cones so we'll be talking about cones instead and so um, so uh, so in terms of cones. I have two pictures of a cone. I can choose either. Well, let me choose both since I you know, need them both. So instead of a polytope spent by weight, we so take a cone spent by weight. By T weight.
that appear. And why? And that that thing instead of the origin, since we twist this by the character, that has to contain that cone has to contain minus well rather if it contains minus chi, so this is so this means it's state. So if that cone if minus chi is in this cone, then the point is stable. So that's uh, this is because because the twist by chi it moves the origin and and then instead of a cone with the origin getting in the cone instead of origin getting in the polytope we get origin getting in a cone and so let's go back to this now to this example here and so then uh, and so then this is there is a there's a torus action here if I take the torus which is uh, just the maximal torus t1 tk in GLK, and obviously its weights, its weights on in the A part, its weights in the A part are just the weights, you know, kind of T1, T2, these are the weights. And so then the cone spend at them at some part, at some part of the positive octant, and similar for B, it's the opposite. So these are the weights, these are the weights, this is the cone. So the weight. In A, right? So in A, we look at the matrix A, we look whichever, which, which, uh, which rows of this matrix are non-zero. If it has non-zero, so this is you know, corresponding, so, so it corresponds to select non-zero rows. Or remember the non-zero rows of A. Then, uh, then, then for B is the opposite. And let's take let's take the character to be the determinant minus one. So minus chi, that's the vector one, one, one. That's the vector that, that you know, sticks out like that. That's minus chi here. Right? And so this minus chi has to be in this cone. And so this is for this condition is, so Tx closure or Tx A and B are stable with respect to for the T action. When that means this this vector is in the cone spent by the by the ways that appear in the uh, in the is the weights of A. Well, it's if and only if this happens if and only if when all rows of A are non-zero. And then A and B are G-stable. Well, what does it mean? That means that however conjugate still all rows are non-zero means the rank of A is actual to K, which is the familiar condition. We just reproduced this familiar condition from the from this Hilbert number. So we, we know from other reasons, we know that then the Kajima varieties are stable, you know, that when this and that happens, but this is we we just recovered the the um yeah. so now now uh the topic of this and the next lecture, well, let's see how fast we can go, is that is that in fact this object, which I maybe copy here, maybe I'll copy this whole discussion here actually.
So this object here, I claim. So this is a correspondence between X and the stack. So in particular, we can pull back elements from X and push it forward to the stack and, and so on and so forth. Right? And so then I claim, so this is, This I don't need. This is, and well, maybe first like, maybe I have to generalize the notion of a stable envelope, that is like a stable envelope. In what sense? So first of all, it's it's an extension, it's a way to extend the the cohomology class. So if I have a K theory class or elliptic cohomology class, so here's the <clears throat> here my um, so if I go to this diagram, then uh, what I'd like to say is I'd like to first I have a well, K theory or well, let's take let's take I mean, it doesn't matter if you take K theory or elliptic homology, it's all the same kind of argument. Let's take let's take I want to start with the K theory first, take the equivalent K theory of X. Since this is a free action, the first error is a free action by the group G. So this is in this in our instance, this is a free action. Otherwise, we need to have, if it's not free, then we have to talk about some kind of Orbi fold K theory of X, which we, we one could do, but we don't do this. So it's, a, it's, it's actually kind of, if, if anybody wants to research projects in Orbi fold things, you know, you can, you can study these things when the action is not free. Uh, so I have no idea how hard to easy it is. So I didn't try. So this, first of all, this first step is that is the same as, since it's a free action, it's the same as, as identification with Y same as table. Right. And then, and then you need to extend it somehow, extend from the open. So that's the that's the kind of kind of really the really question of fact because that's extension from the open. So in, this, in, in general, it, it resembles the class, resembles the class, uh, it resembles stable envelopes, and that at least stable envelopes have the feeling that it had some, we have some cohomology class or theory class or elliptic cohomology class, and you have a, you have it, um, you have it defined on the open, you have to extend it somewhat canonically on some bigger thing. And so this is why I have this picture behind me. And then, uh, so this is, this is an extension here, but in fact, <clears throat> In fact, we will be, instead of doing this, we will take it instead. So somehow technically easy. Also, also it makes more physical sense and technically easier. So instead we would be going to tactic standing here, we'll take to the ambient state, but then support it. So why is, why is singular? So it's easier to talk about things on the ambient smooth thing, which are supported on the Y. So this is the standard, this is standard workaround. And it's in fact, so it's more natural because if you think about, if you think about actual physical kind of, you know, the meaning of that in, in some theories, which we discuss, it's not so natural to talk about classes that live on Y and don't come from the ambient space. So that's, I mean, the principle can be studied, but it's, uh, but it's, uh, so this is a replacement. This is, this is, yeah, this is somewhat close, but it's, uh, but, uh, but the, but the issue is that singular, and that is smooth. So it's a familiar, it's a familiar. See, smoothness is important because the stable envelopes we we talk about they have to talk about top if you remember anything from the construction of stable envelopes you have to you have to uh, talk about tom bundles and stuff and you know those things are smoothness is kind of crucial in those in those considerations 
So this is first the first the first or the first way in which this resembles, in fact, generalized stable envelopes, is that, uh, like I said, that's the problem of finding a canonical extension of K-theory class or elliptic or, or elliptic cohomology class. So, so easier, maybe more kind of more elliptic, of course. We need both, and you both the K and the elliptic. And so, uh, <clears throat> and so uh, this is um, this is the first thing. So first, so so like I like the stable envelopes. in summer this is an extension problem for cohomology classes and then and more importantly This will be solved by the same set we solved can be solved or can be solved inductively using a stratification. So if I remind, if I may remind you, how does it go in in in? So we used when we did so we, we did this argument, which I have behind me. I mean, what well, I uh, <clears throat> I uh, I copy here. But what's the what was the what was the kind of induction we were we had if we had if we had for attracting manifolds we had you know we had some class x and then the sub variety x one and then the smaller sub variety x two and so forth this is this was a stratification of x and that was <clears throat> defined by this was the this is this is by full attracting set of so we had we had a fixed point maybe a fixed component of the fixed locus with some, some torus action. So I had some kind of a fixed locus and that had maybe a first, so maybe we had um, Fi, this was the disjoint union of Fi, this were the components of the fixed locus. And then maybe there was F1, the top one, and there was attracting manifold. And then this attracting manifold could could have could hit some F two. So maybe it should hit some F two in some complicated fashion. And then from F two we take the attracting manifold of F two. And so on and so forth. So this would be this would be this attracting manifold the top thing, the attracting manifold of F1, that would be X1 minus X2, the attracting manifold of F2, that would be X2 minus X3, and so forth. So we take all this closed strata that that uh, you know we get starting from some component of the fixed locus. I hope you have some vague memories of that. And then and then we start by by we start by having 
So we have then increasing, so the complements then have increasing sequence of open sets, and we would, we would try to uh, extend the class by induction using one stratum at a time. Right? And now, so this is now, um, and this is, so, and this is, well, <clears throat> now I, I want to say that this is in fact a special case. This is a special case. In fact, so it's not just analogous, but in fact, a special case. Of this certification. Maybe I'll write classical. Because it has so many names attached to it. So if you read, if you read uh, Winberg and Popov, there has, uh, there's a big list of names of people who who thought about this, including Bogomolov, or uh, so uh, for certification. He's, also, he's often, for, I mean, in, in the same paper when he talks about vector bundles, he also talks about, and that's a, that paper is very famous for other reasons, but uh, but people, it also has to do with this, this sort of certification, certification of the unstable locus. Meaning that here we can, we we should, well, it's not, we should forget X and put Y inside. And maybe, maybe I'll do this. Maybe I'll do this uh, since I didn't do this. I'll do this in uh, when I rated the notes, but that's, you know, basically that would be the, that would be the stable part. Start with the open part, that's the stable. And then it's the kind of least unstable. This part is the least unstable. This is second least unstable. Etc. So what does this mean? So this is what's the measure? What's the measure of degree of instability? And the measure of degree of instability is is the following. So where is my Where's my, where's my pictures for that? Right, and in since I'm mentioning Bogomolov and other people, I should also give credit for this. So this is the point of view, which is this is the point of view. This point of view, I learn from Dan Hyper Leisner. Right, so this is I I didn't think in terms of you know when when we, when this whole thing started we talked about thought about Torah and stuff I didn't think in terms of JIT certification so I thank Ben for for explaining me that. So, so this is what does it mean? You know, how we're gonna, how we're gonna, how we're gonna stratify things by how unstable they are. So first of all, there is a, there is the open strata. So this is when this zero is in my polygon. That's the stable locus. Stable, and as I said, stable is uh, <clears throat> stable doesn't mean doesn't depend on which ambient geometry you're working. So maybe we'll take Z minus Z1. Talk about maybe Z is the good thing, since we talk about we want to talk about smooth space. And then and then the um, if it's if zero is outside, then it, it's clear that the, you should measure you should measure how unstable things are by um, by how far is zero outside, right? That makes sense. And so, but then to talk about how far, you need to choose a metric. So to talk about, to, to quantify quantify instability, Choose an invariant metric.
onto the algebra of G. And then, of course, it induces a metric. on characters and co-characters. So it's induced a symmetric on this space. We're here in the space of characters of the of weights, or maybe so weights and co-weights rather. So a metric here in this space, we need a metric. And so then we can talk about the distance. We can talk about the closest point, so to speak. And so this is, this is, we think of the, we think of this, the, the point which is closest. So the distance from the, we, we will measure it not only by, um, we'll measure it not only by the, um, uh, um, yeah, by the, um, um, you know, by the actual distance, but we'll remember the vector. So that's the closest point. And that closest point by the metric, this is dual. So this 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 shortest vector. Shortest um maybe shortest path is dual. So which I write is dual to sigma, which is a one parameter subgroup. So this is you take in, so it's going to be a sigma in coate uh, of torus, or maybe the rational, since so it's a rational, since this is a rational polytop, this is maybe take a rational thing. And so then this is which, so this is a one parameter subgroup, this is one parameter subgroup that brings uh, my point Z to zero, the fastest. That makes sense. So. And then, uh, <clears throat> and then I can since this is, but this is, this is, uh, we have to talk. We, we talk about one specific representative, and then we have to, and we have to decide when which are the, which are the, uh, how do we know, it's if it's reduced. So this means an element, so an element maybe be called Z. So Z is reduced if it's support. So that maybe this Newton polygon will take the support of Z, so called the support of Z. It's support of Z, this is the Newton polygon. Cannot be made. Any closer. Any further, rather. From the origin. By the GX. And for instance, in this exact, in this, um, in this, um, um, in this uh, example of Grassmannian, we had some metrics, and for this metrics, if some rows are zero, then of course this means uh, this means this is already the zero is the vector we want is outside of the support, and so in principle there is this one parameter subgroup that that is going to bring it to zero. But if the rank, so it could be that there's some 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 um, while we mean, I don't know, five rows of the matrix are non-zero, still the rank is three. So it means, means by further conjugation, we, make, we can make it even further from the origin. So this is so why it's called reduced. And then there is a very basic theorem, so theorem that is reduced. If, You take you take the projection 
So this is we're talking about some. It's a vector space in some. Um, it's a it's it's a vector in some vector space. So we can take the projection onto the part which is already no, maybe take it call it z zero. So this is the projection on the weight. This projection onto weight spaces. On the closest face of support. And so this is some polytope with the metric, it has some closest face of some dimension. And so this would take, and then we take uh, those components of the vector Z, it, so it makes sense. And so that vector is for that has its own polytope and the analog of zero for that polytope is this point here. So this is, yeah, maybe I'll kind of put it here, or maybe the different color, the blue. So, so this is the new zero. So this is the, this thing is the support of that zero. And this is that new zero is the new origin. Okay. And so then the, the statement th theorem says that this, this, this Z is reduced if that Z zero is stable under the action of what? What acts there? So this means so it's reduced if Z zero is stable. Sorry, what, what was Z again? Z is, is some vector, it's some vector space. Okay. And Z, Z is a point in this, in Z, and which we assume is embedded in P of V, some vector space. And, and then you have the weights. Uh, so maybe well, let's go, let's go back to this to this picture. So where we had we we took we had some abstract algebraic variety with some ample land bundle, which we can always assume that we use this land bundle to embed everything in just projective space. So in, in which case, land bundle, my ample land bundle is just O of one that is coordinate, and everything sits in some vector space defined by that land bundle. And so that is some vector in the vector space, and we record if I have a vector, then we can record which are the weights. So then we have a vector in the torus. We can record which are the weights of the um, of the uh, um, you know which are the weights that which are the non-zero weights that the, or not zero all weights that appear in the in the of the torus action that appears in that vector. And in particular, we can project onto any part. So we, we can select any weights and we can project onto that part. That makes sense. Yeah. And so maybe so maybe an example will help. So what, what what's an example of this here? So an example of this theorem is a grass manion. So so I'm gonna take the I'll take the grass manion. So Example of usual the T star grass manion. K n. And so we look at this matrix that takes the n dimensional space to k dimensional space. So maybe I'll write the matrix as A is in home from C n to C k. And then suppose it's unstable. So maybe suppose it's rows, e.g. e.g. only rows. One and three are non-zero, meaning, meaning in my picture here, where, where was my picture here? Here, that was my picture.
So it's only it's only one and three. So maybe this is T one and this is T three. So my weights that appear here are only this weight. And so I have I have my uh so that's my you know that's my that's my it's my cone that I get. Well I guess I'll try my best drawing. And so here I had my vector minus chi. I take its projection onto onto this. And then I ask, when is that thing is now stable with respect to the whole group? Like when is it reduced? It's reduced if and only if the corresponding the corresponding the corresponding two rows are stable. So this needs to be, so they need to be need to be stable for the action of GL2, which changes them. That is to say, the rank has to be actually equal to two. Right? So this means 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 if I have if I have some coordinates that, that survive, and then there is that they have to be stable from some smaller group. That makes sense, and so this <clears throat> this means this. Uh, so then this this induces. So taken all together, and right, and so. Right, I I, I want to say a one word about how this proven. You'd be better read in, in Lindbergh and Popov. This is, uh, but it's the the kind of the idea of the proof. I'm sorry, I didn't say for which action. Sorry, for the action of the centralizer of the subgroup. And the idea of the proof is that the idea of the proof, well, we can take the Lie group G and then we can have, we can have this, the centralizer of the sigma but also have the parabolics p plus p minus, which are this is where this are has this has non-zero weights, sigma weights, and this has the non-positive sigma weights. So we have a we have a, an action of one parameter subgroup that induces the decomposition of the Lie algebra into the zero, positive, and minus, and then the corresponding to that would be the <clears throat> would be the uh, the Levy, the positive parabolic, and the negative parabolic, and then and then well, and then you and then you 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 observe that this part this part by the assumption of C sigma, this part preserves preserves the support the, by, by our assumption. Preserves, so maybe preserves the fact. So this is since preserves the fact that zero is in the support. G times Z, zero. And then on the other hand, G is P plus Weil group P plus. And Weil group also preserved because everything is Weil group invariant. So this is still somehow nothing. If I take Weil group invariant, nothing's going to change. Sorry, can I, uh, you, yeah. you have both Z naught and support of Z naught here. Is, is everything okay? I don't understand. 
Okay, so there's denote the projection, projection onto the Denote is a vector and support are the weights. So denote is a vector okay. in some space and the support are this Newton polytope. <laughs> okay. More questions? Okay, well, you read. So I, I tried to explain the idea which you can read in Wienberg and Bapov. So the, this gives this gives the following stratification. Stratification. So if you take points, so points, points which are destabilized exactly by this parameter subgroup, it's one parameter subgroup. So first of all, I will have an overall, we'll have an overall have an overall ordering by the by the distance to the origin and then here we take what we take here is this element z naught lies in the stable locus for uh, the action of um of g first of all so first of all this is since right, I should say this is this the corresponding point. So since these guys lie on the line, since since support of Z naught lies on the line, which is perpendicular to sigma, check. This means that the point Z naught, which is you think in the projective space of some some vector space is fixed by because that means what does it mean to lie on the line it means all these monomials are scaled with the same power under the action of sigma and so this will be in the projective space it'll be fixed and so this means <clears throat> the point the node varies inside you take a fixed component inside a component component of maybe maybe I'll write V and then a particular weight of sigma and intersect with the stable locus for G sigma. So that's a smooth space. And then, and then whatever we have here it really doesn't matter. Whatever we have here, it, it really maybe has some different color. So that smooth space, that's the analog. That smooth space is the analog of this F i, right? So previously we took all fixed points, but now we take a fixed point and. So this replaces and just smooth replaces. So maybe we'll call this guy this new F I, where I is the number by which all these guys are ordered. And so the difference with the, the difference with the previous is that now also stability condition is involved. It's not just being fixed. And so then, uh, and then whatever we have here, that's just the attracting manifold. So that guy here, that's the attracting manifold with respect to sigma of that phi. Right? And now, and now we have to allow for g. So this was for this was for fixed torus. This was for no. In this picture, we, we fix the torus and the whole strata, this is first, first for fixed torus. Okay. 
And now, as a very torus, okay, three attempts to write very, and I tried, tried not even the spelling. I I wrote down two different words that pronounce similar to very, uh, very, which I mean this word very, the torus. The stratum equals, so <clears throat> I have my attracting manifold with respect to sigma of this phi, and then I take x by g, but but p, p plus i, and maybe call it sigma i. This is this are now. This is, these are ordered by the distance. Okay. So that's the, that's that's a theorem. So this means not some theory one has to prove. But it's so. What's the content of this theorem? Get this is theorem says that the kind of the theorem that as we rotate by the torus, then what we get is exactly this g g over p. There's no there are no further intersections. I mean, if we rotate by the group, I apologize. We had we we wrote down for something for fixed torus, and now we're rotated by the group, and then there's no uh, if I have distinct representative in G mod P, then this is a decrease pointing parabolic. And so then in particular, so the conclusion corollary if that is smooth, then the stratum. Is smooth with normal bundle. Why? Why is it smooth? Because F i to start with F i was a fixed locus of a torus on a smooth manifold, and then I take an open set, so this means it's smooth. And then, and then this product is okay, it's smooth with normal bundle. And the normal bundle we need for uh, for induction. So the normal bundle is what. You take the normal bundle, uh, take the normal bundle in in Z to Fi. So Fi is a fixed locus. So this will decompose into attracting current and repelling. So we take the repelling ones. So it means repelling. But some of this direction will be eaten up in this, uh, so, so I have to subtract, take the, the Lie algebra, and we take that part because that's the, this is the tension space. To G mod P plus, right? Because by, by definition, by definition, the, uh, the weights in this uh, in this parabolic are non-negative, and so the remaining one are negative, and so then you get this thing. <clears throat> right. So then, if I start, so then if I start with the, um, if I start with the, maybe I need a drink of water here. So then, so uh, so how does how do we do induction strategies or induction strategies? So I remind you. Is that we have uh, we we add one stratum at a time, so we take 
we take maybe maybe we consider the the cofibration sequence. So take a stratum, take its inclusion into Z, and then there will be a map to um, sorry, not like that. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. I, I'm uh, so you take the inclusion, you take the z minus the stratum, I'm going to take the cofibration. This this maps this includes into z. Then this now include this, and then the corresponding thing would be now z mod you contract the complement of the stratum and so forth hmm. that is so what is that that's the tom space so this thing is the space of the normal bundle. So the stratum. And then and then we will uh we'll have uh you know the usual if you <clears throat> remember from the summer how the induction goes and this is this will be this will be the exact same the exact same um the exact same argument and then maybe I'll just maybe I'll just say what do we want really so what do we want to extend so so this this is so how did it go in summer in summer we had there was some so, so let's say we work in logic homology so that means means there is some uh, from the tom space you get some theta functions and then you have to balance the theta functions exactly with with the with the line bundle which you're trying to interpolate. So then, uh, so this is where was the notion of polarization and so on and so forth. So then, maybe uh, maybe the just say the the oh, how does it go? Uh, yeah. Can you move back a little bit? I I didn't catch. So where's the fixed locus? What's the action? Uh, like, is fixed it true that? What? You, is it true that? Um, yeah. Okay. Um, so a tractor with respect to maybe I should. So T is just the so maximum tor. No, traction with respect to that one parameter subgroup. So what does it mean that what does it mean that everything else lies on the other side of the hyperplane? It means by the action of the of this one parameter subgroup means means that the um, the corresponding points have larger weight than the ones that are in that zero part. So by the action of one parameter subgroup, the corresponding points of the projective space will be attracted to that sigma. So Okay. Um, so, is it true that you describe the, the stable locus as a as fixed point for something? No, no. Stable no. locus is an open locus. Okay. It's not fixed point. It, it's the opposite. It, it's stable locus is the locus where. Uh, well, but I explain what stable means. So previously we. So the the, the difference was the billing situation. The billing situation we just booked, picked up some stable locus and sorry, some fixed points and some attraction, some attractor. Now the difference is twofold now. First, when we pick the, take the fixed locus, first of all, we have to throw out unstable points in that fixed locus, unstable with respect to a smaller subgroup. And second, we have to take, this was for some fixed one parameter subgroup, but now we have to take this for one parameter subgroup and rotate it around. And rotate it, rotate it around, that's exactly, this is this object here, that's exactly the this, this responsible here for, this object here, this rotates, rotates sigma i around, so to speak. Because 
because this one parameter subgroups are not are not universal up to conjugation by G. So we have to take them all around. So this would be instead of being just attractive manifold, you take first take attractive manifold, you take you throw out unstable points with respect to some smaller subgroup, and then you take an orbit of that with respect to some bigger group. That makes sense. Um, well, I, 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 was by the way, was this P plus I defined anywhere? Uh, uh... Yes, it's it's the part. So it's defined here. So it's here. So maybe I'll say say this is a parabolic. Maybe I'll copy it here so that it's closed. So the, the Lie algebra of P plus I take the Lie algebra G and you take the non-negative part with respect to the sigma I. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, if I have if my sigma I is like for, for instance, a sigma I something like T, 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 one, 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 then PI would be something like that. P plus would be. It's, it's an example. While we're here, is what? We, we are the are the only sigma i that can show up those that are perpendicular to facets of this polytope, or you, you have to take all possible polytopes, right? So you take so this is we <clears throat> we 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 um, classify all possible polytopes by the facets which is closest to the origin, and so that means means we have a we choose a vector which is uh, which is supposed to point to this closest facet, closest closest facet. Yeah. In other words, we take with we you know what was the condition? We choose some one parameter subgroup. And then we took we take well you know we have to normalize it somehow let's say let's say that this is has the value of it just classically people classically people so that you know like in Lee, so okay so this is in Lee theory I'm no I'm teaching I'm I'm teaching that stuff exactly in my Lee theory class so in Lee theory people like to pair so subgroups to look like SL twos so in Lee, classically people normalize it so that all these weights are equal to so maybe maybe. But it, it doesn't matter, some constant, so maybe. So in Lee theory, we classically say that this, this hyperplane is when this, the value of that one parameter subgroup is equal to classically two. But it couldn't make any function because maybe I'll take it one, whatever. So if we take a fractional, so if we take a fractional, uh, so if we take a fractional one parameter subgroup, you know, we don't have to normalize everything like in Lee theory, let's, let's make it one. But so that means so if we take one parameter subgroup that corresponds to a hyperplane, and then we consider all possible all possible uh, polytopes that have that are um, have some facet on that hyperplane, and then whatever beyond that, and then the condition that whatever we have on that hyperplane has to be stable. That makes sense. All right now going back to this uh, now going back to this uh, sorry maybe one uh -huh. you have this phrase uh, as we vary the torus t i don't understand what, what... but the many maximal tori in a given group so is t is just a maximum. Maximum group t is just yeah if I, so t, right uh, okay so this uh, in this hilbert mumford criterion you one talks about one maximal torus but there are many maximal tori it means okay. Hilbert Mumford criteria says that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hilbert Mumford says that. Yeah. 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 So now maybe I'll I'll somehow I don't want to I don't want to since we were kind of close to the uh, close to and I'm I'm somewhere in the middle of my notes for the class I realize how this is 
the idea of finishing this course before uh, New Year is in jeopardy now. But anyway, so uh, so what was the what was the what's the induction strategy there? The induction strategy was we took we took the um, <laughs> took kind of uh, so this means if I take the if I take the elliptic oh so let's let's write it in elliptic homology. That means then you take means you have O of the elliptic homology. Let's 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 not call it well, I don't know. Let's call it uh, uh with the notation here. So take O of elliptic homology Z and in principle there's some long exact frequency, so it's O I. So that would be going to O I um of elliptic homology of the open. And then, and then here there would be, since it's a Tom space, so it's a big the theta function or this normal bundle, maybe minus. And the principle has some highs, but right? that was the. That's the that's the long exact sequence what it's gonna look like elliptic homology. And now we 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 want sections of some line bundle. We want the extension of a section of some line bundle. And I think we do that S. Take it S. Take it S. Okay. This we had a name for this attractive line bundle. And what was attractive about this line bundle is that it had some some balance on the degree. It had some 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 balance on the degree of that line bundle. And what the balance was good for is that we would like this object here. Would like this object to have degree zero. In sigma. In the directions of sigma, so sigma is some one parameter subgroup that has says some there's some fixed locus. I mean, this is normal bundle, and everything contracts to the fixed locus of sigma. So this was the this is and then we use, and then we use, and so this means if I have a normal bundle, if I have a a, a non-trivial line bundle on an abelian variety, then this will lead to cohomology vanishing. It will have no cohomology of any kind. And if this term has no cohomology of any kind, means the sections sections means means no cohomology means so from the long exact sequence means this means means sections. Of S lift uniquely from the open path. Raise your hand if you remember anything about how this how this induction give up when. Oh, thanks for your honesty. Uh maybe uh Maybe it's then maybe it's slightly pointless for me to uh to try to press this case right now. Maybe we can all refresh refresh our memory how it goes. But uh uh no but sorry <laughs> I got some messages on different channels and I uh, started answering to that. So so this is this means this means some condition here. So this is this is some this is some this is some balance condition. So can it, this is attractive, means a condition, this condition. And what satisfies this condition, so attractive, so attractive line bundle, and the new situation, 
is that for L, so maybe, sorry, S. First, maybe we'll consider S not. So I'll state this since to have some sort of complete discussion. And then um, <clears throat> and then we resume next time. So S not, so first we'll take S not, which is something like this theta function of a polarization of Z. times degree zero. And then we would like to have, we, we don't like classes on Z, we would like classes supported on on Y. So this would be the kernel of the map from, from elliptic homology of Z to elliptic homology of Z minus Y. Right. So this is, would like, that means, means supported, these are means. supported on y so this is this is no longer line bundle the argument goes first you take the I mean the argument so it requires some some other argument so this is not this is a line bundle and this is not so it's not like the argument it's not like the argument actually goes somehow without change Need, need a new argument. But uh, so maybe I'll conclude the lecture for today by stating the two, two by stating um, a request and uh, a piece of good news. The request is that if you could refresh the memory of how the elliptic stable envelopes are actually constructed before the next time that could be uh, very useful. Uh, and the second piece of good news is that for Nakajima varieties, no, already know the result. Meaning, we've been writing some formulas for elliptic envelopes, and those formulas were formulas in Chern roots of the universal bundle. Means, as stated, they make sense on the stack, and those are the elliptic stable levels on the stack. So it's not, it's not like you know, the formulas were right. And so this is not the, this generality. There's really no new generality for Nakajima right? It's just you can you can talk about this, you can interpret this in this way, but well, you know you can, but it's. It's for Nakajima clear varieties. All the formulas we already have written, they are, and we will, we could write more. All of this usually involves uh, churn roots of the universal bundle, and that means they're really formulas on the stack. And you know, this is this is all there is. So example. Example. For if I take stable envelope of a fix. For Grassmannian, stable envelope is, has the way we were writing has the form that had the form of some you know, some kind of centralization product of i less than j, and then there was some expression like theta x. In in one of the summer lectures we we talked about this formula at length, but let's just Let's 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 hope you can and then there's some kind of product of either function. It's maybe not so important. Right. And so this was this was a formula on X. This is on X. And therefore, also since uh, since X is a free quotient, therefore also also on this Y semi-stable. Okay. And then 
if we push forward to Z, this push forward is what? So this is a map. This is the this is this is inclusion. Uh, with normal bundle. given by by the equation mu equals zero. That is to say you have um, you have the uh, um, that is to say you get you get so this is this is in the Lie algebra which is also tensored by H bar inverse. And so this push forward, this is multiplication by, it's a inclusion with this normal bundle means it's multiplication by. So multiplication by the product over all i and j, theta h bar x i over x j. These are the weights, these are the weights in the Lie algebra. This is h, we have to take the dual weight. And then so the well the weights in the Lie algebra are self dual and so then this is h bar so you get this and so if we multiply this expression by so if we multiply this expression here by this weight we're going to get of course So what we're gonna get on Z, so maybe, um, you know, let me do it, it's a lot, not so, but we take it. Um, okay, I'll, I'll erase it later. Um, so on Z stable, on the stable part of Z, we'll get So so far we didn't get so far we didn't get to uh to uh to any unstable points. So we just we just took we just took the um the stable points, we took the pre image under the quotient by the group and we took the push forward under the under the inclusion with the moment map equation. So uh, so on Z stable we're gonna get an expression in which this part, instead of being in denominator, it goes to numerator. So you get h bar h j over x i, and then this part goes away. Right? And so now we have a formula which is since symmetrization upon symmetrization, first order poles are going to cancel out, and so this is a regular function. Regular, because it has first order poles over x i equals x j, but since you symmetrize, this means uh, this means uh, you know symmetrize means poles going to go away, and so so this thing is regular, and so what do you think? How can it possibly extend in some other interesting way to the whole z? And so in fact, already is. So already is. The correct extension. So, that, so, so somehow there's a well. You know, like I said, while you, while you can discuss the while you can discuss the general procedure. In fact, the formulas for right for like a general right is they already. Well, we will start. We'll talk more about this next time. There already the formulas we have. For for the academic criminalize, they also they also work for the stack. Well, uh, we have a lot of material to cover before New Year, and I'd rather not have a I'd rather I'd rather have a good vacation after the New Year. So I apologize; it's been a little fast. But uh, but uh, well, anyway, questions. Um. So could you? 
like abelianize directly on the stack to write down this formula? Yeah, I think you could. Yeah, I think you should be able to. I don't know. I didn't think about this very directly, but I believe it can be done. Yes. But right. Yeah, I think it works. So um, I I guess I guess I'll have to rewatch the lecture. But can you like summarize what what was the main idea today? Oh, that's a good question. So the main idea today was so. so maybe I'll go back. Thank you. This is, this is... The main idea. So the, maybe it's two main ideas. Maybe I'll make it a little smaller so that we can see it better. So, um, so the first main idea was that this this capped vertex was descended. They already I already stressed this before, but we're coming back to this for now, kind of somehow for in a serious way now. So, so I'm coming back to this in a serious way. This 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 uh, this vertex of descent is stable. Level. So in elliptic homology, it really is. So if you take the k theoretic vertex of the standard, is the elliptic stable envelope? It's just the two objects equal. And now, what does it mean to have a stable envelope for the stack? It means it's a way to extend. So stable envelope, by definition, is a way to extend the class from an open to the whole the whole thing. And in that sense, you can abstractly. So then you can abstractly. Um, Kind of axiomatize that, but more importantly, for sorry, the stack sorry. there is a stratification. So hold on, let me say. For mm -hmm. the stack there is a stratification, which generalizes the stratification we used in the discussion of stable envelopes, in for torus actions, and that stratification is strictly generalization. It's a good exercise for you to work out, but in fact it is a generalization. And so, and so one can not only, one can not only postulate. The existence of you know postulate the definition of stable envelope, but in fact can prove their existence in a way very much resembling what we did in the torus case by just following the strata. The strata strata looks somewhat different. Strata looks well, you know, they, they look there's one can compare and contrast, and the uh, comparing is that the strata are attracting manifolds of both some one parameter subgroups. And contrast is that they're not whole attractive manifold, but has to throw out some point. And then one also has to take the G orbit of that attractive manifold. That's, that was, that was my, that's my three minute summary of the lecture. Now you can ask more questions. Uh, so, sorry, why did you say that it's extension from the open? I thought before it was extension from the fixed point locus. Well, I mean, it's extension from, so if you take any time uh, you have a, a fixed point locus, then there is an extension to this, uh, to the attractive manifold. And with the, with the others, with the points which don't, so, I mean, what would we do? What would we do? So if I take, if I already have, like if, like if we look at this picture, I think, can you see my cursor here? So if I, suppose I, I take the attracting manifold, then the attracting manifold is a, is, is a, is a, you know, to close some manifold in the open part, the open part being being you throw out all the strata below this attractive manifold. And so then from this open, you have to extend your cohomology class to the whole thing. Uh, okay, I see. So, so, so to your summary, is it, so you extend from, uh, mm, from, from semi-state, mm, so I extend from the stable part to the, the whole stable. thing, right? So, yeah. so I take, we take, what do we take? We take, so it's like in this grass mainian example. We had some class on X, we pull it back to the, we pull it back to the quotient, somehow nothing happens. Then we push it forward by the moment map. So it means we clear denominators that come from the moment map. So we get some kind of class, class on the ambient thing, on the stable locus of the ambient variety that's supported on the zero locus of the moment map. And now we'd like to extend that. And so now that is a class to extend. And then we, you know, one can argue, one can prove its existence by, uh, by an argument which is induct on this all the strata. And that's a, that's a useful thing to do. I'm not gonna do all every detail of that, but it would be good to have this in mind. 
and then but then also there is also a kind of for an academic variety there's a synthetic way to do it which i'll explain next time and there were also some attractors and fixed points involved in, in this construction right yes of course yes so this is this is the same it, it's just it's just in the building situation we don't have we, we can choose in the building situation we can choose the one parameter subgroup once and for all we can just pick one and take its attracting manifold and we don't have to do anything because there's no conjugation right so this in the in the building situation we pick one parameter subgroup and we look at attracting manifolds and that's and that's a specification but in the non building situation we have to look many many different kinds of one parameter subgroups we have to you know subtract we have to subtract the loci we don't have to, all attracting manifolds we have to throw away some 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 things which are more unsta even more unstable and then uh, and also of course with every one parameter subgroup we have to take all of its conjugates so we take all of the all of the uh, all the whole g of it more questions All right. Uh, thanks so much for uh, for listening. Uh, if you could refresh, uh, sorry, I should have. Sorry, I should have. I should have written the group chat that uh, asking people to refresh their uh, the construction of the of the core, kind of the you know. <laughs> anyway, so uh, to be continued next time. And, uh, thanks everybody.